like to. Want to hear it again? <laughs> oh, we're back. Oh, I'm sorry. It's, a, it's one, of those, one of those crazy things we keep doing. The show is Poet the Poet, as, as you may know. And now we come to our next guest, Mr. John Taylor. Now, John Taylor is a novelist, a screenwriter, a storyteller with a guitar, a singer-songwriter. He does all kinds of things, and he gets around, too. He's published in the Saturday Review, the Chicago Tribune, the Los Angeles Times, all the, all the major papers, a few of the minor ones. He's got this novel, The Forgiving Dream, which has uh, been turned into a, uh, a screenplay, yes. which is coming out. And I forget who, who bought it. Was it Steven Spielberg or Artie Spielberg? I can never keep it straight. Well, it's a long story. This, yeah. It's... Uh, uh, I wrote the novel, uh, finished the novel about four years ago, and uh, the uh, someone in development at Amblin, uh, Spielberg's company, uh, read it and asked me to write a screenplay, and I had never written a screenplay before. So you just ambled over. So I just ambled over, and uh, two yeah, years, to Amblin, yes. two and a half years later, uh, emerged with a screenplay, and it's uh, being evaluated, and uh, a producer has picked up an option for it, which sort of means, you know, it's a very big maybe at this point, but uh, you know, with a little luck, with a little luck. Who's going to play you? Well, uh, <laughs> one of the characters is called Old Man, uh -huh. but he's only uh, about four feet tall, so, I, so I'm sort of disqualified at this point in height. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm, I think I'm grizzled enough. Uh, I'm, I might be able to suggest a few people. <laughs> Maybe I could do it. I'll walk on my knees, and uh, <laughs> never mind about that. But uh, tonight you're going to share a little, uh, a little singing songwriting with us. Is that the case? A little of the music, yeah. That's where I really write my uh, autobiographical things, and, and that's uh, the music is really what means the most to me. Uh, well, the, the guitar is the tip-off, of course. Absolutely, that's, uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, I understand that you want to do a song that has great personal meaning for you. Yes. Uh, um, this is 20 bucks, right? Should I do yeah. that one first? Okay. This is a good song. I wrote this about eight years ago. Uh, a friend of mine, um, a Vietnam War veteran, he and I decided we'd, we'd get our lives straightened out. We were on a pretty, uh, pretty fast track at that time, and by the grace of God, I made it uh, uh, here now 12 years later. And a few years ago, Billy, uh, his name was Billy Wade, uh, was found frozen to death in a cardboard box. He lived in a, in a, in a box under an overpass uh, uh, near the city. And um, just before Thanksgiving, the year before he died, I gave him a $20 bill that, that uh, helped him get a, a room in a flop house and a little booze and a few sandwiches. And, and I came away with it from that experience with a song called 20 Bucks for Billy. And I like to think that Billy is uh, sort of laughs every time he realize he hears this from up on high, and and uh, and hears that a song has been written about him. It's called Twenty Bucks for Billy." It's from my friend B Billy Wade, who died three years ago. On a sidewalk south of Uptown. Where losers line the street He's hunting for an iron grate To throw him up some heat He feels the threat of strangers And the fear of all alone On the war of Billy's yesterdays Rages on and on. He sits in some old doorway wearing someone else's shoes, looking up at the passers by through a cloud of pills and booze. He holds a can of pencils and hopes you might take one and throw a little change to his mama's stoned out son. 
So here's 20 bucks for Billy. Thank you, Lord, for me. Billy's my brother. But for the grace of God, there goes me. He's a long way from Nebraska, a long way from the farm, where he aimed a shotgun at his daddy, out there in the barn. It took a whipping for the last time, he was 17. But he couldn't pull that trigger, so he joined the United States Marine. Semper Fi, U.S. Marines. And they took him from the heartland to the napalm and the pills. Shrapnel took his shin bone, whiskey took his will. And when the war was over and the choppers flew away, home sweet home for Billy was a cardboard box on South Broadway. Now it's 20 odd years later and the world is frozen still. The cold just keeps on coming. Soon there won't be no more bill. But in the meantime, Lord, he needs to drift away. Life's better, like the righteous people say. So here's 20 bucks for you, Billy. Thank you, Lord, for me. Billy, you're my brother. But for the grace of God, there goes me. That's a very moving song. One thing that concerns me, though, is even though you gave Billy the 20 bucks, if he looks down and finds out that you did write the song about him, he might ask for royalties. He might. He was that kind of guy. <laughs> ah. He was a survivor. I, I see. <laughs> Um, Dominique, ever think of hanging up the guitar? I did, actually. Oh. I tried it. It's much too hard. <laughs> oh, well. I'd rather stick with my pen. Okay. Okay. Now, Dominique was telling us about uh, life in that uh, charming hamlet of Bayside by the Bay. Well, that's why they call it Bayside, of course. Uh -huh. And um, I understand you have a similar past, but in a different... Uh, different location. Yes, yeah. and it, it's uh, what I do. I used to, I grew up in a little town up in the Adirondacks, and uh, I used to name the town. Yeah. But now, in order to protect the innocent, namely uh, me, I call it Peaceful Valley. I see. Are you sure it wasn't an injunction? <laughs> <laughs> it might well have been. And, and, uh, uh, or a referendum, I, maybe. That's a Peaceful Valley was, uh, population was 1,500 uh -huh. when I grew up there. It's now 2,500. Uh -huh. It's really mushroomed up. Mm. And, uh, You're considerably outnumbered, then. Absolutely. Yeah. And when you live there and the weekly paper uh, comes out, uh, the Peaceful Valley bugle, as I will call it is sort of like a contradiction in terms but uh, <laughs> you never know came out every Friday and you knew what you were going to read because everyone you know everyone in town knew what was going on but then when you leave when you leave home and you come down over the other side of the mountains and start to make another kind of life for yourself and you still get the peaceful valley bugle it takes on a different kind of 
of, of, uh, of meaning. You start reading about, first of all, your friends who are getting married and having babies, and then so you're reading about someone's funeral and someone going out of business, and it I'll becomes a different thing. you have thing. a song about the Peaceful Valley I people. certainly do. I certainly do. It's called Hometown Paper, mm -hmm. coincidentally. Would you like me to do it? Wouldn't you know? Yeah, <laughs> might as well. <laughs> okay. We're, this, we're in this deeply, so. Okay. It's a long song, so perhaps at some point I'll sort of cut it off at the right, at the right place, but we'll, we'll see. Hometown paper, it comes in the mail. Mailman brings it every Friday without fail. I sit in the kitchen and one more time, I go back home, but only in my mind. Headline said the mayor just died. He used to be a high school buddy of mine. We played ball together, went to fight a jungle war. His heart just gave out in the hardware store. The old hotel said it's been sold. They leveled it to the ground and just left the hole. They said the fella who bought it changed his mind and left town. I guess they tore it up before they burned it down. I turned to page two, there's a picture in the corner of a handsome young sailor that looked just like his mother. Years roll back for a second or two to a backseat night when all of that was new. And on the next page, I saw a few lines where Cousin Barbara had a baby that makes either eight or nine. Seems like every year or two, her and Donnie have another couple more she'll catch up with her mother hometown paper that comes in the mail mailman brings it every friday without fail and i sit in the kitchen one more time Go back home, but only in my mind. I read where Ruthie's diner had a fire. They say that it was caused by a short in a while. But Ruthie had it all under control. By the time the fire truck was ready to roll. So Ruthie called him back, said, don't you bother to come. The cook just poured it out with his Coca-Cola and rum. But you boys, come on down later for some eggs and coffee. Because I appreciate your thought, so get your breakfast on me. Jerry's garage is having a sale on tires But there's a good chance he won't get many buyers Cause this time of year, times are hard And people keep their cars up on blocks in the yard It just costs too much to keep them on the road When there's not much work there's not much soul. People get to where they're going by shoe leather express. Times get better, more or less. Now 
I could go on, but uh, I was about to get to a verse about the TikTok bar and grill just outside of town. <laughs> the only people, and this is true, who are allowed in there are people who are having affairs with other people's husbands and wives. So, you know, if you go in there, it's okay because nobody's going to say anything. So if you want a little more, you're going to have to subscribe to the Peaceful Valley Bugle. There you go. And I thought it was because the people who who hear about the people who go in get ticked off, and you know how they love to talk. <laughs> right. Anyway, thank you, John Taylor, for coming in and blowing your bugle for us. Thank you, Robert. Or the guitar, or in this case, maybe me. And thank you, Dominika Bednarska, for coming on Poet the Poet. I'm going to slip in a quick poem before we go, the one I was joking about earlier. A shyster taxidermist tries hawking me a rabbit with antlers, a jackalope. His sales pitch recalls Muhammad Ali. My checkbook succumbs to rope dope for all you sports fans out there. <laughs> and of course, thanks to Bill King and the gang at Kitchen Cabaret here in East Hills on Glen Cove Road for letting us come in and make a uh, public spectacle of ourselves. And with that in mind, we'll see you next time on Poet to Poet. So, uh, cognito ergo sum, and we'll be seeing you. <laughs>